As our kids face the fall semester returning to school, there are bound to be discussions among themselves about masks. Who's wearing them? Who isn't? And it is hard enough, certainly, for middle and high school students in particular to socialize. We want to help you help them avoid conflict when they head back. Local psychologist Dr. Tracy Alloway is joining us now via Zoom this morning with some suggestions. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So how can we help our kids not feel ostracized or not ostracize one of their friends because of that person's decision to wear a mask or not? Such a great question. I think the important thing to remember is two things might happen. First of all, be sensitive as a parent to changes or shifts in your child's behavior as a result of this, this situation that's in flux. So if you notice them exhibiting more internalizing behavior, so are they becoming more quiet? Do they not want to participate in some of their usual activities? Or are they externalizing a bit more? Are they a bit uh, more angry? Are they yelling a bit more than usual? Be sensitive to those shifts and changes because that may be a sign that they are experiencing conflict in the school and they're just not uh, able to express that to you in the home life. And I think that because teens in general are not fantastic sharers with their parents, I've got two of them at home, I know this for real, right? What about peer pressure? Because there might be some students who, who feel a certain way, but because all of their friends are doing something in particular, they feel like they need to do that. Is there something we can say to our kids or talk to our kids so that they don't feel this pressure? That's such a great question. As a licensed psychologist, this is a technique I use with my clients. It's called the STOP skill and it uses the four letters of the word stop so when you're feeling that sense of peer pressure that you're being pushed to do something that you don't feel comfortable doing or that maybe you want to do when you're trying to engage other people the first thing is to say the word stop to yourself and it almost reverse engineers so it, instead of trying to talk yourself out of something you're kind of using your body language and just doing stop the second thing that we do is to the T is to take a step back. And again, we're reverse engineering the process. So we're using our body to try to calm our emotions down by taking that step back. The third thing is to observe what is going on. How do I feel right now? And really just being mindful of the present moment. And finally, P for how do you want to proceed? What would you like to say in this moment? But the first three steps, give your brain the space to kind of dial down some of that emotional intensity and then make an informed decision. Dr. Tracy Alloway, local psychologist, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having me.